Hello everybody, it's Anthony Geisen here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of the 7 Artisans 35mm f5.6 lens. And I want to say thank you to Pergear for providing this lens for review. So like I was saying, this is a 35mm f5.6 lens for the Leica M mount, and it is the cheapest Leica M lens you can buy brand new currently on the market. But there are a few drawbacks that do reflect that lower price point, and we'll get into that in this review. First, we're going to take a look at the build quality and the construction of the actual lens, and then we'll take a look at images. Right off the bat, you'll notice that this lens is a pancake lens. It's really thin and ultra compact. It weighs about 127 grams or 4.5 ounces, and it's the first pancake lens I've ever used on the Leica M system. Next thing you'll notice about this lens is that it's rather flashy and it kind of like catches your eyes. At least this color does. This one's got gold and silver and around the edges of the gold there's like some designs here. It's just, it really does draw the eye to it. And when you're using a lens for street photography, you generally want to be as discreet as possible. So I suggest if you are looking to get this lens, check some of the other color options available. There's a few, I think there's one in all black, which uh, would be a lot more discreet on a camera like this. This is Seven Artisan's second WEN series lens. The first one was the 35mm f1.4, and you can see it's got the WEN marking on the lens hood. Right here, it's underneath the Leica logo. And that means the WEN series under Seven Artisan's is specifically designed for street photographers. This is a fixed aperture lens. It only shoots at f5.6 which during the day isn't really much of an issue, but if you're doing nighttime street photography, 5.6 might be cutting it, you might be losing some of the light, and it can get a little trickier to use. The focus on this lens is controlled by the little lever on the side here, which also conveniently doubles as the lens cover. When you push it all the way down to the bottom, it's covered and closed. You can see the distance markings on the side of the lens here, and that is how you will decide where your focus is going to be, because this lens is not rangefinder coupled. So when you look through the viewfinder here and you adjust focus, your rangefinder patch, it's not going to move, and it's only going to be used for framing up that 35 millimeter shot. The ways you can acquire focus with this is, one, be really precise about your distances, know where your subjects are going to be, and use the uh, focal distance gauge here. Or you can use Live View, or if you have a Visiflex, you can attach one of those on there too. I took this lens out on a few photo walks. On one of them, I tried using just the viewfinder to compose and my best guess at what the subject's distance was from me. And I found that when using the focus distance on the side here, it's really hard to tell where a subject is. If it's about 10 to 20 feet away from you, you can't really find that precise point in here because going all the way to infinity and then just a hair away from infinity, it, it has a big jump to it. And so I found on that photo walk, when I was just guessing my distances, quite a few images were out of focus and I just completely missed the shot. So that is something you've got to be aware of. You've got to either be really, really accurate about eyeing a distance and knowing how that reflects on the lens here, or you're going to just have to start using live view when you're using this. One of the other photo walks I went out on, I found that it was best to just set the focus distance to a particular point and then move myself so that the subject is that distance away from the camera. I would find that easiest to set the lens to infinity and then just get as about as far as away as I could. Or I would set it in between here, uh, between the 0.5 meters and infinity. And I would, you know, at the first subject, figure out where I was standing and then I would gauge that through the rest of the photo walk. So it does take a little bit of practice to get used to focusing with this lens. On the plus side of it not being rangefinder coupled, the minimum focusing distance is 0.3 meters on this lens, which means you can get pretty darn close, uh, especially for a Leica M lens. When I'm using this lens and you start focusing closer and closer with it, I find that since that f those lens elements are moving out, there is a lot of flare that gets introduced. And the closer you get and the further out that element gets, the more and more flare will be seen in your images. I've had some when I'm fo focusing at 0.5 meters and 0.3 meters, and there's just a huge streak of flare across the whole image. And normally with street photographers, what they like to do is put lens hoods on their lenses, you know, block out that because you never know which direction you're going to be facing when you catch that decisive moment. With this lens, you can't attach any filters. You can't attach any hoods. So you're basically just stuck with, I feel like shooting this lens at infinity because any further out it goes, it's going to get flare on those images. 
Seven Artisans did release the optical design for this lens and it does show that it has a few high refractive, low dispersive elements on there, but those don't seem to be doing much for this lens and I found that flare is just gonna be in a lot of images. Now on to the image quality and probably the single biggest drawback of this lens. And that is, if you're gonna be shooting in color, just know that all of your images on the edges are gonna have purple fringing and there's not really much you can do about it. I mean, maybe you can go in Photoshop and kind of correct it, but that's just a pain in the butt and not worth it. I didn't even notice this was happening because when I use my M240, I have it set to shoot raw and JPEG at the same time and my JPEGs are set to black and white. So when I take a picture and if I review it on the camera on the back, it's showing me a black and white image and I didn't know that. Um, I find that when I'm using the M240, I'd like to see the images in black and white because the back of the screen is just so bad anyway. I can't tell you know, what's sharp. But this just kind of cleans it up for me. And so for once that was to my detriment, I didn't know that the edges of all of my pictures have gigantic purple fringing. And in some of them, it, it, it creeps in more to the image and in some it's a little less noticeable. But on all of the raw color images I took with this lens, like 150, 200 images, there's purple fringing on all of them. All of the JPEG black and whites, they look pretty good. I don't think you'd ever notice that there is some kind of fringing coming in at the edges. It looks fine and it would be totally usable on a uh, monochrome camera or if you plan on just like I do, shooting a lot of black and white JPEGs. So that's the biggest downside to this lens, I think. It's, it, it really is a major issue and that's why I can't recommend it to people if you're gonna be shooting a lot of color. It just won't work for you. So taking a look at the images here, I first started using this lens just around the house before I even took it out and I was getting some pictures of Salmon and Marcy. And as you can see, it is a really sharp lens. It's an f5.6, so it should be sharp, but the images are really nice, especially for that $200 price point. Take a look here at some of the sharpness, that's 300% zoom. At 100% zoom here, it is a really clean looking image. And now we're at some of the photo walk pictures and it wasn't until I got home and reviewed them in Lightroom that I noticed that there was some of that purple fringing along the edges. In a couple of these images in the color, you may not notice that there is fringing like here on the sides. It's, it's, you can notice a little bit of purple in the corner here, but it's not super noticeable. In some images later, it's gonna be all that you'll pay attention to. But a lot of the black and white images just look great. I love how these look. This is what I was seeing on the back of the camera when I did review images. Here you can see on the right hand side of more of that purplish fringing coming in. But in black and white it looks fine. Every now and then I was getting lucky and some of my color images just weren't really showing that purple edges. So like this one you could see it's it looks fine. I'm sure it's still there but it just doesn't, it's not as noticeable. And so here's something else you can do if you're in Lightroom and you go into the develop module, you can always use the gradation filter and just kind of draw in from the side here and adjust your, your colors and your levels and stuff and you can kind of correct it, but it's just a little bit of a hassle to go through that kind of thing for each image that you end up liking. Here you can see I'm trying to focus a little closer on the residential book library and the contrast and the colors are really nice on here and it's a really sharp image too. Let's take a look at some of the buttons on here. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I can read a bunch of the text on these by Guess, Morgan, you know, all the designs and stuff. That's really cool. And like I was saying earlier in the video, a lot of these black and white images, you'll never notice that there is that purple fringing. On some of these, I did crop the color image. So you can see here, there's the color crop, and then here is the full size black and white. Not much crop difference, but when I go back to the color, you can see there's just a little bit of that purple on the top. And when I was driving around town, I saw this really cool old Land Rover. I had to get some pictures of it, but as you can see, the edges are just a little too purple for my taste. I think the black and white really looks nice. I tried a couple different angles on this to see, and we'll, we'll take a look here 
at some of that sharpness. Let's go down to, you know, the mirror and the window here being cracked. Just a really cool looking image. I ended up sending one of these pictures over to Pergear and asking them if they were getting similar results with this lens with the purple fringing on the edges. And they were saying that they were also getting that purple coloring. And you can see in the black and white here, it's not that noticeable. But Pergear also confirmed with me that it, you do get that purple fringing. And it may be less noticeable on a non-sample version of this lens. I am using a sample version. If you plan on using this lens, you might be able to trick it into giving you a cool sky effect even. So on this one, you can see across the top here, it's giving me a nice gradation on the sky. Something I wasn't expecting, but you know, you might be able to make an artistic point out of it. But a lot of these in black and white are really nice and I enjoy a whole bunch of these I took that day. I think a few of these in black and white could make a nice little photo set. Like I was saying, if you kind of trick the lens, you can get some nice sunset shots with some added color to the sky. And it can look nice. As you can see here, it kind of looks natural, maybe a little dreamy. You'll be seeing lots of black and white images throughout this review just because those are the ones that turned out the best. The sharpness, it's relatively good. It's an f5.6 lens, so it's not that soft. It's, it's, it's decently sharp, especially for the price. Contrast, it's a little low. I, I could have used some higher contrast images for myself, but you can always just crank that kind of stuff up in Lightroom or Capture One, whatever editing software you use. That's not as big a deal. That purple fringing though, it really is a major issue. At the end of the day, it really is hard for me to recommend this lens unless you're a monochrome or black and white shooter only. And the reason is for 50 to 80 bucks more brand new, you can get a 7 Artisans 35 millimeter f2 lens, which lets in quite a bit more light and it's not that much bigger. If you take a look at them here and you compare, sure, this one's a little teeny tiny pancake, but this is also not a large lens by any stretch of the imagination. It is very tiny. Both of these lenses can fit into my jacket pocket when they're attached, so it's not really an issue for me. And with this 35 millimeter f2 lens being 50 to 80 bucks more brand new, you get a lot of stuff that this lens is lacking. You know, you get the more light coming in since it's an f2 you can focus correctly because it's rangefinder coupled. So when you're looking and you focus, you can see what you're actually focusing with. Um, and it has the ability to take filters and hoods on the front. So all around, this is by far, I think, a better lens to use. It's more versatile and it's barely any more money in the scheme of things, especially, and the biggest thing is you can shoot color pictures with this lens. <sighs> So I am kind of disappointed by this 7 Artisans when lens. Uh, in the past, I've really enjoyed 7 Artisans lenses, especially for their price to performance. Um, but this one just feels like it's lacking and I, I have a hard time recommending it. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to see lower resolution versions of any of the images featured in this video, you can check them out on my Instagram and that is at Antney.